For what purpose does the gentlelady from Florida rise? Mr. Speaker, by the direction of the Committee on Rules, I call up House Resolution 793 and ask for its immediate consideration. Clerk will report the resolution. House Calendar Number 144, House Resolution 793, resolved that at any time after the adoption of this, of this resolution, the Speaker may, pursuant to Clause 2B of Rule 18, declare the House resolved into the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union for consideration of the Bill, H.R. 3685, to prohibit employment discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. The first reading of the Bill shall be dispensed with. All points of order against consideration of the Bill are waived except those arising under Clause 9 or 10 of Rule 21. General debate shall be confined to the bill and shall not exceed one hour equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking minority member of the Committee on Education and Labor. After general debate, the bill shall be considered for amendment under the five-minute rule. The bill shall be considered as read. All points of order against provisions of the bill are waived. Notwithstanding Clause 11 of Rule 18, no amendment to the bill shall be in order except those printed in the report of the Committee on Rules accompanying this resolution. Each such amendment may be offered only in the order printed in the report, may be offered only by a member designated in the report, shall be considered as read, shall be debatable for the time specified in the report equally divided and controlled by the proponent and an opponent shall not be subject to amendment and shall not be subject to a demand for division of the question in the House or in the Committee of the Whole. All points of order against such amendments are waived except those arising under Clause 9 or 10 of Rule 21. Amendment number 3 in the report of the Committee on Rules may be withdrawn by its proponent before the question is put thereon. At the conclusion of consideration of the bill for amendment, the Committee shall rise and report the bill to the House with such amendments as may have been adopted. The previous question shall be considered as ordered on the bill and amendments thereto to final passage without intervening motion except one motion to recommit with or without instructions. Section 2. During consideration in the House of H.R. 3685 pursuant to this resolution, notwithstanding the operation of the previous question, the Chair may postpone further consideration of the bill to such time as may be designated by the Speaker. The gentlelady from Florida is recognized for one hour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the purpose of debate only, I yield the customary 30 minutes to my colleague from the Rules Committee, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings. All time yielded dirt during consideration of the rule is for debate only. I yield myself such time as I may consume. I also ask unanimous consent that all members be given five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks on House Resolution 793. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, House Resolution 793 provides for consideration of H.R. 3685, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act of 2007, under a structured rule. The rule provides for one hour of general debate controlled by the Committee on Education and Labor. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of the bill except clauses 9 and 10 of, the rule, of rule 21. The rule makes in order three amendments that are included in the Rules Committee report. The rule also provides one motion to recommit with or without instructions. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to rise today in support of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act of 2007 and passage of this rule. By passing this bipartisan legislation today, the House of Representatives will take another step important step towards equality for all Americans. During the 230 year plus history of our great nation, the march towards equality under the law for all of our citizens has sometimes been slow, but it has been steady. Over time, Congress has outlawed discrimination in the workplace based upon a person's race, gender, age, national origin, religion and disability. Because when it comes to employment and hiring and firing and compensation and promotion, these decisions are rightly based upon a person's qualifications and job performance. Sometimes the fight for equality has been slow in coming indeed. This legislation that outlaws job discrimination based upon sexual orientation that the Congress will pass today was filed 
and introduced over 30 years ago. It is long past time to ensure that no one in our country can be discriminated against and fired from their job based upon who they are, whether it's their race, their color, whether they're man or woman, or whether they are gay. Private companies across America know this and are way ahead of the politicians here in Washington. Many of our neighbors back home would be shocked to learn that millions of Americans can be fired from their jobs or refused work or paid less and otherwise subjected to employment discrimination without regard for the quality of their work and without any recourse under federal law. While many states, cities, and counties across the country have outlawed job discrimination on their own, many states and localities have not. I am proud that the cities of Tampa and St. Petersburg that I represent have outlawed job discrimination against gays and lesbians, but our counties have not, unfortunately. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act protects all Americans, no matter where they live, by making it illegal to fire, refuse to hire, and refuse to promote employees based upon a person's sexual orientation. See, in America, no person should have to worry about the security of their job because of their sexual orientation. Our country bases employment evaluation on hard work and on a job well done. Making employment decisions on anything else is unacceptable. In fact, 90% of Fortune 500 companies in the United States have adopted policies similar to the legislation that the Congress will pass today. And a broad coalition of businesses and community organizations strongly support this landmark civil rights legislation, including the Human Rights Campaign, the Anti-Defamation League, Central Conference of American Rabbis, the National Education Association, the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, and I'm proud to say the NAACP. I'm proud that this Congress will stand up for equality for all Americans and stand behind our values and understanding that we do not discriminate against our neighbors for any reason. And we should be able to live comfortably with the knowledge that our neighbors will not discriminate against us. The passage of this legislation will remove, remove a legitimate fear that exists among us that we may lose our job and be unable to provide for our families when someone decides to exercise intolerance and prejudices against us and our neighbors in the workplace. Thanks to extraordinary leaders in Congressman Barney Frank, Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin, Chairman George Miller, Congressman Rob Andrews, Congressman Chris Shave, Congresswoman Deborah Price, and so many others that will stand up for Americans here in this body today and pass this law. I thank them for their leadership and their commitment to equality for all of Americans. And I agree with them that passing this historic non-discrimination act will bring our nation closer to our goal and our promise of equality for all Americans. This time I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves the balance of her time. The gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the general lady from Florida, Mrs. Castor, for yielding me the customary 30 minutes. And I yield myself as much time as I may consume and ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, federal law bans job discrimination based on race, color, national origin, or gender. In addition to federal law, 11 states have passed laws prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and general gender identity, while another eight states bar discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. The unemployment non-discrimination, the unemployment, or the employment non-discrimination, let me start over again here, Mr. Speaker, with that. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act would extend federal employment discrimination protections to employees on the basis of their actual or perceived sexual orientation. Mr. Speaker, I strongly oppose discrimination in the workplace. 
and I believe that skills and job performance are essential for determining whether employees are hired, promoted, or dismissed. However, I do not think it is the place of the federal government to legislate how each and every workplace operates. As a for former small business owner, I know what, that uh, what brings success to one company does not necessarily bring success to another. As I mentioned, a number of states have enacted state laws in this area. That is their right as states. Many small businesses and large corporations have chosen to adopt their own policies. That is appropriate as well, Mr. Speaker. This bill, as written, though, raises a number of concerns, including that it would expand federal law into a realm where perception, where perception, Mr. Speaker, would be a major under discrimination law. On Monday, my colleagues on the Rules Committee and members testifying before the committee pointed out that the debate on the bill, at least in committee, had been productive and a respectful one. Mr. Speaker, I am truly disappointed that moments later, the Democrat Control Rules Committee chose to report out a rule that denies the House and the American people the opportunity for a full and fair debate by prohibiting 99% of the members of the U.S. House the opportunity to come to the floor and offer amendments. For the last two weeks, Democrat leaders have had the opportunity to amend, alter, and change this bill. This editing and rewriting has been done behind closed doors and is contained within the miller Stupak Amendment. Democrat leaders have acted to deny a public debate and to deny Republicans the opportunity to offer an amendment similar in scope to the miller Stupak Amendment. Mr. Speaker, this is not an open and honest way to run the House, and it is not what the Democrat leaders promised the American people only a year ago. This rule only makes three amendments in order, Mr. Speaker, but buried in this rule, there is a special provision, a special provision that allows amendment number three in the report of the Committee on Rules to be withdrawn by its proponent before the question of adoption. Mr. Speaker, what, what does this mean? It means that the Rules Committee decided to make three amendments in order, but denies the House the vote on one of those amendments. I, I just have to wonder why the Democrat Rules Committee is denying this a vote on amendment. And I would, my friend from Florida was up there, and I would yield to the gentlelady from Florida. She can tell me why this provision is in the bill to allow, uh, to deny the House a vote on amendment number three. And I'd yield to my friend if she would uh, explain this for me. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to answer. I, I do wish Ms. Baldwin would allow a vote on the amendment. I strongly support the amendment, as many of those in the Congress do. But this was her request, and this is the way the rule has been structured. Thank you. Madam, Mr. Speaker, I, I thank the general lady for giving me that option. I, I can't remember how many times I've been in a rules committee talking about and asking members who come forward with rules or potential amendments, I should say, uh, what their choice would be. Would they like to have an open rule? Would they like to have a closed rule? And every time I hear, at least from the members of the Rules Committee, that the Rules Committee will decide. Now, it sounds in this particular case that one member, one member decided that she didn't want to vote on it, and so we deny everybody in the House an opportunity. The general lady said that she would like to uh, be able to uh, vote on this. I'll give her the opportunity uh, to do so. Mr. Speaker, I have to say, I've served on this rule committee for a decade, and I cannot recall one instance when Republicans were in control that a rule was, a, was passed through the House to bypass the rules and for, to allow a member to withdraw an amendment. I believe it is wrong for a substantive legislative issue to be raised on the floor only to deny Americans, through their representatives, uh, a, vo a voice on that amendment. Let's be clear about what's happening here. And that is that the rules of the House are being altered to block the House from voting on this amendment. It's clear and simple. We were elected to represent our constituents by casting a vote and votes. And today, Democrat leaders are denying us a vote. I am extremely concerned with this unprecedented rule, and I have an amendment to the rule, and I hope the gentlelady will support me. My amendment would, in Section 1 of the resolution, strike the sentence 
which begins, and I quote, Amendment Number 3 in the report of the Committee on Rules, end quote. And Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that the resolution be uh, amended to reflect the change as offered in my amendment. Woman, yield for that request? No, I do not. Did, did, I, did I, Mr. Speaker, I hear objection? The gentlelady from uh, Florida did not uh, yield to that request. No, I, the, the question I have, I ask unanimous consent that the amendment be, uh, uh, be uh, considered and, and adopted. And I object. The gentlelady from Florida must yield for that request. She is yielded for debate only. And I do not yield. Well, I'm, 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 is, is my amendment now before the, the uh, body? The lady from Florida yielded for debate only. Right. Does the gentlelady yield to me so that I can offer the amendment? I do not yield. The gentlelady from Florida does not yield for uh, making an amendment. So, so, so uh, did, did she not yielding for unanimous consent. I, I just want to make this clear, Mr. Speaker. I'm asking unanimous consent to have the amendment that I described be considered. Now, if I have to engage the general lady for that determination, I'd be happy to do so, but I'm asking unanimous consent that that be done. So uh, I, I, I'm just asking for a ruling on that. She yielded for the purpose of the debate only. She did not yield for the purpose of uh, asking for unanimous consent. So, so, Mr. Speaker, the way I understand your ruling, then, is that I hear no objection, so therefore my amendment should be made in order, and I uh, would like to move the proper procedure so I don't hear any objection. The objection, the objection came from the gentlelady from Florida saying that she did not yield to you for um, the purpose of making an amendment. So, so, there, so there has been an objection. She won't even let you talk about the amendment. I cannot entertain the gentleman's request. Well, I'm, I, I, I must say, would, would the general lady, would the general lady yield? Uh, it, it, did she re reserve the the right to object, uh, and would she yield to at least explain why she objected? Time was yielded for debate only, and the gentleman is not entitled to make that unanimous uh, re uh, consent request. Well, Mr. Well, Speaker, yielded to for that purpose, and the, the chair will not en engage in debate with the gentleman. The uh, rules committee made the decision, so uh, well, the you. Par parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. If if I a, a, a attempt to amend this, how what procedure would I go through in order to try to amend this rule? If the previous question, uh, question was defeated, an amendment could be offered. That is the only way that, uh, that I can further parliamentary inquiry. Then the only means I have is through the previous question and not to ask unanimous consent. Or if the general lady yields for that purpose. Would well, the general lady yield so I can ask unanimous consent to amend the, uh, amend the uh, rule? I thank my colleague, but I will not yield at this time. The general lady has not yielded. All right, I, I, I understand. Well, that, that's the case, then, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I, uh, I accept uh, the ruling, and, and I wish I had a more full description of uh, why, the, why there's a, a problem not at least allowing a vote, potentially a vote on Amendment Number 3. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I have uh, no other choice but to ask my colleagues then later on today to defeat the previous question so that I can amend the rule by striking the language that I described by, uh, allows a proponent of amendment number three to withdraw their amendment before a vote. So let me, just let me be clear. When I offer this motion, this motion by voting no on the previous question, members will therefore be allowed to show their support or opposition uh, on amendment number three, which would expand the bill's protections to persons discriminated against based on gender identity. This is defined in the amendment as gender-related identity, appearance, mannerisms, or other characteristics of an individual with or without regard to the individual's designated birth, 
sex at birth. Now, members that choose to say yes then on the previous question would therefore be showing their support for denying, for denying members of this House an opportunity to vote on that issue. So, Mr. Speaker, I would urge, and I'll talk about this later, but I urge my colleagues to vote no when I offer that uh, motion on the previous question. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, the gentlelady from Florida. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to yield two minutes to a member of Congress that con continuously and forcefully speaks out for equality for all Americans. Congresswoman Barbara Lee from California. Gentlelady from California is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me thank the gentlelady uh, from Florida for yielding for her leadership and for her fairness and her diligent work on the Rules Committee. Also, I want to thank uh, Chairman Barney Frank, uh, Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin for their hard work in bringing this bill to the floor today. First, let me um, say that um, I was on the floor the other night, two nights ago, and members of Congress so eloquently reminded us that this is National Bible Week. So as one who believes in the scriptures, as a Christian, and as one who uh, embraces uh, what everything Democrats and Republicans were talking about the other night as it relates to love thy neighbor as thyself. We are responsible for the least of these. I know for a fact, like all of you know for a fact, that discrimination against anyone, and I mean anyone, is morally and ethically wrong, and it goes against the teachings of all of our great religions. This amendment that recognizes, the Baldwin Amendment, which recognizes that transgendered Americans should have all of the protections and the rights of any person in America should be included in this bill. It should include the Baldwin Amendment. Because if we believe in who we are as a country, and if we believe that discrimination is wrong against anyone, then how in the world could we leave out a significant number of Americans the in this bill? So if you? it becomes law, transgendered Americans will still face, and I mean still face, discrimination in the workplace. And we must not let up until we ban discrimination against everyone, even those based on, no, I will not, because I want to complete my statement. Uh, we we must time not to you. I'd be more happy to give her my time. Gentlelady's time has expired. Well, may I have an additional 30 seconds, please? An additional 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, I, just want to make, seconds. I just want to say, in closing, that uh, gender identity uh, should not be uh, allowed in terms of our discrimination, in terms of the laws that we pass. We should not allow discrimination against anyone based on gender identity, based on sexual orientation, based on race, religion, age. This is America. This is America. And I think that the Baldwin Amendment would take us one step closer to being the country and the America that we all inspired. believe in and that we all love. The gentleman Speaker, from uh, Washington. Mr. Speaker, I give myself one minute. Would the gentlelady from California yield? I, I, I'd, I'd be happy to yield to the gentlelady. It's my time now. You were speaking, uh, if, I, if I heard you correctly, on the, the Baldwin Amendment. Now, the way the rule is structured, there is potential for not a vote on that amendment. Uh, I'm going to offer a, a, a motion on the previous question to allow that to be voted. Now, if I understood what the gentlelady was uh, was uh, saying in her remarks that she would like the opportunity to debate that and presumably vote on that. So I, I, I would hope that the gentlelady would, uh, would, would join me in voting no on the previous question. What I yield. I'm, what I'm saying is I think that the Baldwin Amendment should be part of the bill that we are debating today. I believe that discrimination against anyone in our country is wrong based on any well reclaiming my time reclaiming my time mr speaker i hope the gentle lady then will join with me in defeating the previous question so in fact that we can have a vote on that amendment as i said earlier i because believe that's... that discrimination against anyone I, is I, I, wrong I, in our country and especially those especially discrimination based on my time. gentle lady from florida is recognized that,